Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we have a viewer requested video that looks at the performance impact having four DDR4 memory modules can have on performance in a dual channel system, opposed to having just two modules. In this scenario, all the modules operate at the same frequency, they use the same timings, and they provide the same total memory capacity. Quite a few viewers have requested this content over the past month or so, and this is because a few benchmark channels have uploaded videos demonstrating how four modules are faster than two in dual channel systems. Basically, you guys wanna know if A, is this possible or was there some kind of error made when testing? And then B, if this is the case, why? Before we get into the benchmark data, I'll just try and explain what I think is going on here. Dual channel platforms such as AMD's AM4 socket or Intel's LGA 1151 require two matched modules for dual channel operation. Adding a second pair will only expand memory capacity and won't upgrade you to quad channel memory, for example. For that, you'd need a Threadripper or Cascade Lake X processor. So why are some benchmark channels showing an increase in performance by adding two extra modules, allegedly without increasing the memory frequency or improving the timings? I believe this is due to how the memory is configured, or more precisely, the memory rank. For those of you unaware, the term rank means the number of 64-bit memory banks on a module. Most consumer-grade memory features a single rank, though higher capacity modules are usually dual rank, while server-grade memory is often quad rank. Identifying if your memory is dual or single rank can be difficult as software doesn't always read memory modules correctly and not all memory manufacturers note the rank in the module's ID. Typically single rank modules feature all the memory chips on one side of the PCB while dual rank memory places chips on both sides of the PCB. However, that's not always the case and a module with chips on both sides of the PCB is really just dual sided and can still be a single rank module. So it is a bit confusing. Where things get even more confusing is when you introduce more memory sticks or modules. A system populated with more than two single ranked modules will actually act as if the memory is dual ranked. In fact, there is very little difference between one dual ranked module and two single ranked modules when connected to the same memory controller, even though the memory chips reside on different PCBs. So in this little example we have today, all this memory is exactly the same in terms of its specs apart from memory density. So these are eight gigabyte modules here and these are four gigabyte modules. But other than that, same frequency, same timings. With these two modules installed, single ranked memory. But when you install these four, they act as if they're dual ranked modules. This is important to note because in the benchmark videos I've seen, all the memory used was single rank. So when using two single rank modules for dual channel operation, the memory is configured as a single rank. However, when using four single rank modules for dual channel operation, the memory is now configured as dual rank. Now, this can give the four DIMM module configuration an advantage as it allows several open DRAM pages in each rank. Although the ranks can't be accessed simultaneously, they can be accessed independently, and this means the controller can send write data to one rank while it waits for read data previously selected from another rank. Now, how much of an impact this has on performance depends on the application and the memory controller's ability to take advantage of open pages. But what all this means is it is possible for four modules to improve performance over two modules in a dual channel system. Demonstrating that, we'll look at a series of benchmarks conducted using an Intel Core i9 1900K and Ryzen 9 3900X processor. Supporting this investigation is Team Group with their T-Force Vulcan Z DDR4 3000 memory. They've provided two 8GB modules along with four 4GB modules and they all use the same timings and of course operate at the same frequency. Testing the Intel CPU has mostly taken place on the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra motherboard, but I've also included some testing on a cheap B360 board from MSI. Then for the Ryzen test system, we have the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master, and finally the graphics card of choice is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and we've used this to reduce the GPU bottleneck in our testing. First up, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and here we see no real difference between using two and four modules, and this goes for both the AMD and Intel dual channel platforms. This is probably the kind of performance you'd expect to see for the most part, but as you're about to see, it's not always the case. Here's an example where we do see some difference in performance for the Core i9-1900K, but not the Ryzen 9 3900X. The Intel system saw up to a 4% performance boost when using four modules, and this was replicated several times. However, while Intel did benefit a little bit in this title with more memory modules, Ryzen didn't, 
as we got the exact same performance with both configurations. It's a similar story with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The Intel system saw up to a 4% performance boost. Certainly not massive, but it was a difference and it could be reproduced over and over again. Ryzen though, well, didn't really matter. Two or four modules produced the same result. Now, this is an interesting result. Testing with Assassin's Creed Odyssey saw gains for both AMD and Intel when using four memory modules. The Core i9-1900K's performance was boosted by up to 7% and 5% for the Ryzen 9 3900X. Clearly dual rank memory is of benefit in this title, at least under these conditions. Here we see quite impressive 1% low performance in Far Cry New Dawn with the 1900K as it was boosted by 9%. And although the average frame rate is barely improved, it's very possible you'd notice the increased 1% low performance. Then we see that the Ryzen 9 3900X system was consistently a few frames faster with four modules, but certainly not to the degree where you would notice the difference. The performance gains seen when fully populating the DIMM slots in World War Z are quite impressive. Here the 1900K was up to 10% faster, while the 3900X was up to 9% faster. Those are fairly significant gains, though we are pushing well over 150 FPS here. Here I've retested the B360 board with the 1900K installed, and I'm comparing the World War Z results. Of course, I'm limited to DDR4-2666 on the locked chipset, but the point here was to see if four modules still boosted performance on the budget board. And as you can see, they certainly do. We're looking at up to a 6% performance increase. The margin isn't quite as significant, but we're also running the memory at a lower frequency now. And lastly, here's a look at how the DDR4-3000-CL16 memory compares to DDR4-3200-CL14 memory. Please note the CL14 memory does pack a 32GB capacity, as we can't get 3200-CL14 4GB modules, but since World War Z doesn't require more than 16GB of memory, it won't really impact performance. What I suspect we're seeing here is with faster memory, the Core i9-1900K is starting to reach the limits of the RTX 2080 Ti under these test conditions. Whereas previously with DDR4-3000 memory, the 1900K saw a 10% boost with four modules. That margin has been reduced to 6% with the faster memory. So there you have it. Installing four memory modules in a dual channel system can actually improve performance. That said, I should make it clear that this doesn't really mean for titles such as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, for example, you'll automatically see a 5 to 7% performance boost. For that to occur, you need to be more CPU limited than GPU limited, and that is rarely the case when using realistic quality settings or hardware configurations. For example, I was testing with a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p, so increasing the resolution to 1440p will likely see uh, any benefit the extra two modules bring neutralized as the games are now predominantly GPU bound. The same would be true at 1080p with a lesser graphics card. It's also worth noting that four modules can limit memory performance in the sense that you might not be able to achieve the same frequency and timings that you could with just two modules installed. So the comparison becomes quite difficult to make as there are a number of variables that need to be considered. The Ryzen 9 3900X, for example, is limited to DDR4-2933 when using four modules, whereas AMD's official spec says the CPU will handle DDR4-3200 with just two modules. That said, depending on how good the silicon is, the integrated memory controller might do better than that. My chip, for example, handles right up to DDR4-3600-CL16 memory with all four modules. But whatever the limit, the point is it will go higher with just two modules. Dual ranked models introduce a new set of limits, though none of those were explored in this video. AMD lists the official dual ranked DIMM support as DDR4-3200 for two modules, but just DDR4-2666 when using four modules. It would be interesting to see how having two dual ranked modules and then four dual ranked modules compare in these dual channel systems, but yeah, I suspect that will be a test for another day. Anyway, I hope this video helped address this topic for those interested. And if you have any further questions or comments, feel free to drop those below. Also, if you appreciate the work we do at Harum Box, you like videos like this, and you'd like to support our work and also get more involved with the channel, get access to our monthly a live stream, our Discord chat, and a few other cool perks, then check out our Patreon page. Link is in the video description. But above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you again next time.